and welcome to the Gamer's Table. It is Monday, and we're reviewing Journey to No Box on the Table of the Earth. Where the hell's the box? That's what there. I was looking for. Like, we brought everything but the box in. Yes. The players slip into the roles of three courageous explorers. Mineralogy professor Otto Lidenbrock, his nephew Axel, and their Icelandic guide Hans Bjelke. I'm guessing I pronounced that right. Anyway, you explore the inside of the Earth in three stages. You descend down the dormant Icelandic volcano, Snæfells. You then cross a turbulent underground sea. Finally, you escape through a volcanic eruption on the Italian island of Stromboli. You make important discoveries by cleverly using equipment like Rumkorf's famed in induction electric lamp in search of fossils and experience, experiences that will bring you international acclaim. By earning the most fame points, or by earning the most fame points, you win. There you go. So this is not a cooperative game, but it sort of has a bit of a cooperative feel. You progress through the first stage and the second stage by playing a number of these colored cards, red, yellow, or blue. So okay. you have three to get three guys. A red guy, a blue guy, a yellow guy. We're not playing Star Trek here. Nobody owns them. Any one of these Slavery guys bad. may be moved by any one of the players. You move them by means of the adventure cards that come in red, blue, and yellow. Go well, figure. Surprising. There should be some wild cards in there. That's well, the just wild, thinking the same thing. <laughs> the wild cards are in here. Yes. Uh, yes. Like the one I had? Yeah. You move one to five. Use any number of colors you want. So you're going to play this game in three stages. Yeah. Going down through Snaffles. Going across uh, the Leidenbrock Sea, Ooh, and then getting blown out the geyser at the other end. Snaffles, that's the Snaffles. name of the volcano. Oh, okay. Thought you were catching a cold there. One thing that's that's good and also frustrating about this game is every time you move and explore, you actually have to end up moving up one space forward. I mean, it makes the game go on as opposed to just everyone wandering around the first stage and just grabbing everything. In, in order to move, you have to move them forward. In order to move, you have to play a number of cards uh, equal to the number of spaces you want to move. You want to move three, play three blue cards, etc., etc. There are tool cards that will modify that. There is also a lot of obstructions in the way that are going to make you play more cards of one type or another. The boulder spaces or the yeah, boulder spaces. Or the pits are going to yes. make you play ropes. And anywhere else that you see symbols on the board, if it's a question mark, you'll draw one of these random events that are all good things there's no reason to avoid that or you will play the tools as indicated and draw that many fossil cards if you have lights you can draw extra fossil cards but you can only keep as many as actual tools you played for the space and the whole game goal of the game game of the goal is to collect to fossil the cards there is a little bit of choice when you get to uh, drawing the fossils if you get an extra lamp you can uh, you play extra lamps they give you, allow you to draw two additional cards, but you choose uh, from those cards and you have to put uh, the rest back. So if you use two tools, you get two fossils, and then if you play lamp cards, you get two more cards, so you're picking from four cards, but only keep two. There's lots of different types of fossils. You got the skeleton, which there are three sections of the skeleton. If you have the one section, it's worth one point. Oh, it's if you have both sections... Fossil. It's worth three points, and if you have all three of the sections, it's worth 12 points. So it's really good to have that. And there's gold, which goes up depending on how much you have, as well as the quartz. But there's a lot of little two-point bone or uh, claw is one. Shell. There's, lots of, yeah. there's a whole bunch of two-points. Lots of different, lots of different fossils. The skull. Skull's worth zero points unless you find the other half of it. Tyrannosaurus skull. Then it's worth five points. It's little blue water jobbies right there. It's little glass beads. Little little blue gems that look like frozen drops of water. Also gems like ice. Yes. yes. But you have to get one of those to protect three fossils. Only through the dry section. So when you come out at the end of the dry section, you see count how many fossil cards you have, and you're going to need one water for every three. If you don't have enough water, you've got to chuck them. If you have more water, each water stone is worth one point if you make it all the way out with it. After you get through... Descending through the volcano, the dormant volcano, you don't need the water anymore because you're going to travel across the ocean and it's, I guess, wet enough. Maybe they need the water just to keep 
hydrated so they don't could be drop when the stuff they get too stuff, tired yeah. and drop it all who knows but yeah when you get to the end of the volcano here first one there we'll get the bonus card and the bonus card the is forest. the mushroom forest one and at the end of the underground lake you will get the bonus ruins card whoever gets out yeah first. the first again yes and that is the first, the person who moves one of the explorers up first. As soon as one comes out, yeah. they all come out. It's a little magnet pulls everybody. They got a little rubber band AI. As soon yeah. as one goes out, the rest of them catch up. And then you put them in the raft. They all stand in the raft, all nice and neat there. Mm -hmm. And now, again, anyone can move, but you're all controlling the one thing. You still need to play movement cards all the same color to move it. Every time you move it forward, you get to draw one of these lovely event cards. Oh, they are cool. And this is good. Like, there's no language dependency. It's just all symbol. This one, you discard two red movement cards or you lose a fossil. So if you're the person who moves up, you have to deal with this first. If you can't deal with it, you lose a fossil and it moves on. Mm -hmm. if, you if, you can play the, if you can play deal with it, you discard your two red cards and moves to the next guy. Then he's got to either discard two red cards or lose a fossil. Right. Does it go... Does it it only goes around? around once. Okay. Yeah. yeah. If That's everybody's it. protected from it, it, it didn't hit anybody. That's ball lightning, so it's going to zip around and hit somebody. Right. And once you get through the underground sea, you get to the last stage of the game, uh, up through the active volcano, and in there, you don't need any more movement cards, any of the color cards. You just need tools. And what will happen is it's a very quick stage here. First person will draw a movement card out of the stack, Red. and that will tell you... Which are the closest <coughs> raft to go to, like the closest red raft there in that case. And if that red raft it has no card symbol on there, it's okay, everybody's safe. But if it has a card symbol on there, everybody has to lose a fossil unless that tool, particular, someone will draw a tool as well out of the tool pile. And if you have that particular tool in your hand, you won't lose any fossils. And then you keep going like that around... Everybody. It's definitely and the fastest stage of the game. Yeah, very, very quick. It was like maybe three cards, and usually, and you're out. And that'll be the end of the game, and you'll count up how many points you've accumulated. And now for the gaming news. Wizards of the Coast has released the second deck pack for Duels of the Planeswalkers 2013 on Xbox Live Arcade, PlayStation Network, Steam, and to on iPad. Available for $2.99, the deck pack features two brand new decks, Berserker Rage and Grim Procession, which provide new magic to defeat foes in campaign or multiplayer gameplay. Berserker Rage. Surge to victory with the red and green Berserker Rage deck. Summon formidable monsters and when opponents let their guard down, use might magic to double their size. Grim Procession. The end is nigh. Wield the spirit's shades and life-sapping magic in the white and black Grim Procession deck to show opponents that their defeat is inevitable. This second deck pack also comes with a foil conversions for the Berserker Rage and Grim Procession decks, and beginning on December 12th, players will be able to purchase either of these decks and or their foil conversions individually. I think we explained the game pretty well. Mm -hmm. How do we feel about yeah. it? So I, I guess what he it. means is wrapping up. Okay. <laughs> it's not bad at all. 7.5. It is a little bit of randomness to it. You can't control what the other guys are going to do. You can't really control what you're drawing out of the piles either. <laughs> you don't know what's coming up in the, the movement deck. You know, you, these ones here. You can't control what's... Well, you got some control about uh, the tools you draw. There's the face up, three face-up cards and the, the draw pile, the replacement pile there. You can draw from either spot. When you draw from the face-up ones, it doesn't replace right away. It's, it replaces at the end of your turn. But you have a little bit of control there. Getting on the question marks is nice because some of those uh, quest, uh, bonus cards, question mark cards, are pretty handy. Not a lot. There's a little bit of control. Not a lot. Like you could be uh, hoping to move, say red. You got a bunch of red cards, and then the other guy goes and moves it. It's like, oh, now it's I'm not ready for what's after that. Where you know the stuff that's in their area. So, yeah, well, there goes your turn, your plans. But it is still pretty fun. I enjoy it. Uh, I like the theme. You know, well, it doesn't really matter too much to the game, but I like the movies and I like Jules Verne and all that. So, and it's pretty well designed. I think you know at least uh, graphically and everything. 
I give Journey to the Center of the Earth a uh, 7.5. This game is fun. Uh, the most thing I don't like about it is the fossils, the random fossils. But thematically, you're digging. You don't know what you're going to get either. No. So you really have no control. So in that sense, it works thematically. I like the three stages. They all have a different feel to it, which is nice. I mean, thematically, I don't know how much sense it makes. I mean, maybe the water for dehydration, you're carrying it yeah, out. Yeah, you don't want to drop everything. Beyond out. that. Um, but yeah, it, it's a good variety in the game. Like, it's not the same game all the way through. You got your first stage, which plays quite a bit differently than the second stage, and the third stage is done before before you know it. Um, different uh, ways to go about in both stages. I, I like being able to get out first. It's able to get out first yeah, get those bonus cards. Because you don't, you can never lose the bonus cards. So they're mm -hmm. the fossils you can lose everywhere. I give Journey to the Center of the Earth a seven. A theme is the Journey to the Center of the Earth, based on the book or the movie, depending on even the Brandon Fraser movie, depending on what you're looking at, because they even follow fairly close with that one. It's there. I mean, again, it's one that you could probably change it, and it wouldn't make much difference. So even though the theme is good, it's not really glued to these mechanics uh easy to play the rules are one double-sided sheet there not a lot to them easy to learn uh fun to play there's some screw you factor in here that we haven't mentioned by you know maneuvering your guys so they're stuck in front of a bunch of rocks now the next guy's gonna need like four or five cards to get him out of there it's like ha 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 you're not going <laughs> anywhere <laughs> And especially if you've got the cards to do that on your next turn, and everybody else, oh, draw, draw. All right, I'm getting more fossils. I'm getting more fossils. You're probably saving up a lot of cards yeah. in then, too. But, of course, also then, especially in the ocean part, you're um, also taking a chance the random events is happening yourself with the ball lightning all the time. But it does follow the story. I mean, the three main bits. Everybody remembers going down through the volcano. Everybody remembers them building the raft and going across the ocean. And everybody remembers the final scene where they get blown out of all the geyser at the end to get out again so you know it's there and yeah it is fairly fun to play it's a slow moving game it's not a really fast pace till the very the end first third and yeah it gets a little quicker in each stage yeah i enjoy it i'd recommend it i i think it's pretty good although if you like too much ran if you don't like too much randomness it might not be for you but if you just like a fun game... <laughs> so that's it for another episode of The Gamer's Table. Tune in next week, where we review another game. Travis, that's what we do. Journey to the inner journey to the enter of the earth. No, journey. I was being sarcastic about let's carry on. But <laughs> so I, thought, I thought he was just being sarcastic too. He's like, no, let's go. Right. I did it right. Sort of. <laughs>